Now let's talk about document split mode. Uh, it's a little bit easier to show you what I what it does than to tell you. So I'm just going to go ahead, hit the comma key. We're going to go into our tool menu here. We're going to grab that demo soldier. We're going to hit the comma key to get rid of our light box. Drag him out. Go into edit mode. Go down here to sub tool, and you're going to see we have his base mesh already selected. So simply go down here and hit delete other in your sub tool menu. Now we have a human base mesh to work from. So let's say we wanted to refine this base mesh using say an anatomy model that we either downloaded or we've made previously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to load tool. And I know where I have one for my CGMA folder here. We have a body male, so I'm going to load him up. Uh, he has a body and eyeballs. I really don't care about the eyeballs right now. So I'm just going to have his body selected. We're going to go back to the demo soldier. We're going to go to append, and we're going to append that body male. Now, I'm going to see there's a big discrepancy between the two scales of these objects. No big deal. Select the body male over here. Go down to deformation and unify, and then we'll turn on transparent. And you're going to see he's a little bit more manageable. All we have to do is, with him selected, go ahead and scale them out so that they're somewhat... Uh, relative uh, to each other, and you can actually stack them right on top of each other. Now, in previous version of ZBrush, previous to 2019.1, if I wanted to have this loaded, I'd have to put him in the back somewhere, and then Alt-Tap uh, this model, and just kind of be sculpting on this front model while he's visible in the back. Um, what I can do now is, if I Alt-Tap, let's go ahead and turn off perspective here. Uh, you, don't, you can leave perspective on if you want to. I'm just going to turn it off just for to snap directly to the side for an orthographic view. If I hit W, and we move him back into place, and he's just roughly in the shape that I want him to be in. What I can do now is I can have an active subtool, which is going to be my demo soldier, and then on another split screen, I can have my reference body kind of either on the left or the right or top of the bottom. So where you find that is underneath the transform menu. If you drag it over here, just by taking this little white um, little nub right there and just dragging it over here into this docking menu, you just double click this little double arrow to open that. Uh, so we got transform, and you're going to see we have a new split screen option. Have you set your split screen to one? You're going to see we have an active subtool right here, and all of the other visible subtools are going to be on this side. So we know he's active because we don't have polypaint turned on, so they're not going to be you know white vertex color. So if we alt tap this one now, it's going to switch because the active subtool. If you hover over this and you hold down control, you're going to see with one selected, it's going to be a left to right split with the active subtool on the right hand side. So whatever your active subtool is, it's going to show up over here. This is the one you're going to be sculpting on. So you're going to see as I rotate, we're going to see our reference model over here and our active model here. When we zoom in, we want to sculpt in on the head. No problem. We have our uh, reference over here and our uh, base mesh over here. So we can go ahead and refine these uh, as needed. Uh, if we want to say move my reference over to this side, because I'm used to like working over here and have my reference over to the right, let's say, um, what we can do is we can choose number th option number three, and now our active model is over here on the left, and then our reference model is over here on the right. If you do split screen um, two, what that's going to do is it's going to be top and bottom, and four is going to be bottom and top. So use this to your advantage if you're using like a reference model and you want to see both of them at the same time. You can really get in here and it'll just match um, your rotational values, and you can really just fine tune your base mesh and match your anatomy reference a little bit easier that way.